Hi guys, Skylar back with a video. Uh, wanting to uh, talk about a new Leatherman tool. It's the Signal. That had me a little intrigued, especially for the outdoor person or whatever, just because of some of the features that it had. So it has uh, not a bad price on it. It's going for around $100. And uh, I just wanted to show you some of the things that it had. This is going to be an overview. I'll be doing a test and showing how some of these things work in another video. But to go over the specs and tools in it, we'll get to that right now. Okay guys, well, um, I got mine from Swiss Knife Shop. And uh, I'll go ahead and get to it here. Now, as far as the materials that it's made of, uh, for the most part, it is made out of uh, 420HD stainless, uh, glass filled nylon, you know, on the handles and all, um, and also uh, black oxide. Let's go through a few of the things on here. I'm going to read down the list and I'll be showing things as I go. Uh, first of all, as most with most Leathermans, it has the needle nose pliers and regular pliers. Uh, it also has the wire cutters and it has listed hard wire cutters as separate. Uh, the thing about the hard wire cutters, they are 154 cm and replaceable, which is very nice. I do like that. Uh, I saw the 154 and got kind of excited, hoping that was the, uh, the main blade. It is not. It is a uh, 420HC. Uh, now, as far as that, the main blade is concerned, I do want to show that. The only thing I don't like about that, uh, other than the fact that it's 420HC, I would rather have it be 154 because that is available in other skeletals such as um, the Leatherman uh, Skeletal CX has the 154. I'm going to be doing a video later and I'm going to be trying to replace the blade and see if I can do that, but that's going to be another video for another time. Anyway, the other thing I didn't like is the fact that this is a combo blade. So about right in here, it switches to a serrated edge. I don't really like serrated edges. I would have much rather it just been a straight flat edge and I probably would have been pretty happy with it the way it was. Uh, the next thing it lists is the saw blade. Now, I don't have nails, so it takes me a second. Saw blade is uh, very aggressive, so uh, it, you know, some of you that have used the saws that uh, Leatherman puts out, it does a really good job. And I haven't tested it yet, but I already know from past experience with their saw blades, this one should do pretty good. Now, this is an outdoor uh, multi tool. It's uh, geared towards the outdoor individuals and things like that. So one of the things it has is the pummel on the bottom. Now it is designed so that you can use it as a hammer and I'll be testing that out and doing some uh, things to see if that breaks. Um, it being Leatherman, I'm not worried about it breaking. If it does, of course they'll replace it. But I have never had issues with Leatherman really other than getting stiff and unworkable. Uh, but they're the quality of their products has always been very good so I'm expecting it to perform pretty well. Now the awl has a threaded loop and I'll get to that here. You can see here's the awl with the threaded loop. Now I want you to see the uh, geometry of it and the shape and everything. Uh, some things uh, you know Different companies make different types of awls, so I just wanted you to see how that one was. I wasn't a huge fan of how round it was there. I'd rather be come out to more of a straight point, but I'm not really going to argue with that too much. Uh, then, of course, can opener, which you would expect to be on such things. Uh, the bottle opener. Now, bottle opener, let me show you that. is built into this carabiner here. So you use the carabiner, which is one of the things that I did really like about this tool, um, but you use that as the bottle opener. So I don't know if you can see that or not. But, uh, moving on to the next thing, it has a 1 4th hex bit driver. I think the 1 4th hex bit driver is a part of this here. Uh, it's 
if you can see, it has the hex bit drivers there. On the other side, it's just a little bit smaller. So one fourth hex driver, uh, bit driver, uh, one fourth box driver, and then of course the carabiner that I mentioned there. Let's see, the smaller one is a 3 sixteenths by the way. I'm reading all this off my laptop, so forgive me guys, I'm just reading through. Um, okay, and then on to the real part that was uh, makes it more of an outdoors thing is here. On the side, you probably noticed the yellow thing sticking off on the side. This is a diamond sharpener. Now, I told you I have not tested this yet. I'm going to be playing with it. As soon as you push the button and slide it off the pin. And it has this here as a diamond sharpener. It's probably going to work fine, but what I'm anticipating from past experience with similar things like it, uh, some companies make really good ones. I don't know how good this one's going to be, but I'm betting this one is going to wear smooth pretty quick. I won't know that until I test it out for you, and I'll try and give you some input on that later. So, and It is very small, but that that is not a concern to me. I'm more interested in whether or not the diamonds will the diamond dust will smooth out. Anyway, to put it back on, all you do is just line up the pin there. Oops. Gotta put it on the right direction. Line up the pin and click it in place. The other thing is the ferro serum rod or ferro rod metal match whatever. Uh, it's removed. It, it sits here. I'll show you with it closed. It sits on the outside edge here. Uh, one concern that I have, again, I have not tested yet, is it has these uh, the housing that holds the ferro serum rod in here. The um, I guess the teeth that are holding it in here are coming up a little high. Now the rod itself does stick up above that, but the problem is, is I think that's going to wear down and then I would have to remove it, break the casing, whatever, to be able to use it any farther without, you know, hitting that with, uh, with your striker. Now, to get that out, uh, it's not that hard. You, just, um, you can see here, if you look on the inside, there's a little clip. And all you do is just pull that clip, push the rod up, and then it's out. Now, I believe the way it was designed and what they would expect you to use, again, going back to my nails, actually I'll just use this, I don't, since I don't have any nails, is to pull that uh, saw blade out and use the back of the saw blade to as your striker. It does have a very sharp 90 on there, so uh, whether it was intended that way or not, that would be a great way to do it. Also, the ferroserum rod is a whistle, and I'll give you a quick test of that right now. And it's pretty loud. So, anyway, it also, the pocket clip, um, a lot of the Leathermans, um, basically, I'll put that up in a minute. A lot of the Leathermans have a pocket clip that is an option to put take on and off. Uh, this one you can take off just by unscrewing it, but it is not the clip-in style that you're used to. So it's kind of a, a part of it. And it, to be honest, it's a lot better than the ones that clip into the like the surge and the wave and things like that. They kind of uh, they're a little bit wobbly and things, and this one seems to be a whole lot better. Uh, now the included bits that come with it. It doesn't come with a set, not at least in the standard kit. I'm sure there are options that you can get. It comes with the standard bits of uh, Phillips and Flathead. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing when I show, when I try and do the blade swap out, I'm going to be showing the kit as I set it up, and I'm going to be getting the set and the pouch that comes with it from uh, Knife Shop, uh, Swiss Knife Shop, and all, and show how I set that up. But that will be coming in the video later. Now, the specs, 7.5 ounces, 
that's 212.6 grams. The length when it's closed is five and a half inches. Now of course depending on what you deploy will determine the length open so I'm not going to go through all those steps. Now uh, whether or not this is a good tool the Leathermans in general were never meant to be a primary tool. So compared to some of the other knives I have, like you know the, my Echo 5 from Dogwood, this doesn't even begin to compare. The steel doesn't even begin to compare. The feel and everything, that it, it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be up to those standards. This is meant to be a tool for, you know, this is all I have on me, and this is what I carry on a regular basis as a kind of a backup, I guess you'd say. Uh, that being said, that if the ferro rod and all that, it can only be used 10, 12 times. Well, it's only meant to be used in emergency. It's not meant to be your primary. So I'm actually okay with that too. So I don't have any problems with that. By the way, getting it from uh, from the Swiss knife shop, you can have up to 14 characters, and you can see here. I'll uh, zoom in on that and let you see. And uh, so I was able to get Able to Survive and print it in on the side. And I mean, it's pretty much an identical match to the Leatherman that they put in it. So I thought it looked pretty nice having that on there. Anyway, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to be doing another video, or uh, at least one more video on this knife. Uh, I'm going to be putting it through some tests and things, and of course, the modifications. I don't know if I'm going to do those on one video or two, but uh, we'll see how all that works out. I appreciate you watching, guys. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll be back with another video real soon.